Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, my Saturday stream, which is a stream with my friends. And today I have here with me Moisty and Landon. Say hi, guys. Hello, hello. Hi, guys. Hi. Oh my gosh. And before we even get started today, Lunar, thank you, thank you so much for giving Moisty that gifted sub. Um, that brings Moisty up to six months subbed here so thank you very much and thank you for the how and i see you even got first two today you are just absolutely killing it today <laughs> they're always killing it lunar's always killing it for Thanks real for real and, and lunar we'll do pins kind of after this segment when we're kind of like doing a break or whatever so that's when i'll do a do a pin for you because we've got a special guest today and so we have a special guest topic um landon what is it that we're talking about today we're talking about community management, which is our favorite thing to talk about here. <laughs> how do we, how do you manage people, especially in an online forum? How do you uh, communicate and connect with people, uh, especially online when the internet feels so not real, but it is real and becoming more real as the internet continues to expand. So of course we have Moisty here who is no stranger to running communities online. Mm, you tracked me in from the depths. No, it's good to be here again. <laughs> it's uh, lovely to be back. I'm going to slowly, you're going to run out of topics that you can pull me in for, but I'm going to keep trying to find these topics that you got me for. We're going to keep making them. So. <laughs> we'll, we'll, figure, we'll figure out more and more, right, as time goes yes. on. So yeah, um, just to add a little bit to that, Moisty is somebody that has been streaming on Twitch for quite some time. Um, he actually started streaming on Mixer. And uh, based on a story that you guys are going to hear today from him. He had quite an interesting ordeal with um, a particular community that he joined uh, some time ago related to Twitch streaming and ended up spinning off into his own community, which is very similar to uh, to my story. Mine was a little less dramatic in how a community got dropped in my lap, <laughs> but I had something similar happen to me. So Moisty has a very dramatic version of it, and we're going to talk a little about that today. So, um, so I'd really love to just kind of go ahead and get started with like, what happened? Gosh, it was like, well, it was over a year ago now, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's about a year and a half now. Year so and a half, seems, okay. It's a long time. Um, I remember it actually quite well because it was all happening around the time that I got my second COVID jab. So it's that seems like such a distant memory now, right? <sighs> this whole COVID thing. So yeah, crazy really, but it's Honestly, it, it's, it's the good, bad and ugly. There's those bits that I've taken from it that are absolutely amazing. I wouldn't trade for anything else in the world. And there's bits that I could have probably done a lot better. Um, and I think there's bits that were better just to never exist in the first place. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that's just, it's, it, is how it, it is how it is. The game's a game. It's happened. Um, so it's, it's worth talking about these things now, isn't it? And, and learning from it. And if I can help other people sort of get through these uh, little tricky bumps in the road, then why not share the knowledge? Yeah, for sure, for oh, yeah. sure. And um, we're focused on education here, so that's what we're always going to be tying it back to is like we we share this drama with you not just because um, it's juicy and fun, even though it is, but also so that hopefully you can not make these mistakes in your own community or you can at least recognize them when they're happening to um, to try to you know prevent them or prevent... Uh-oh, you okay, Landon? No, everything <laughs> fell. It's fine. Uh -oh. <laughs> It's okay. I'm just without a light now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. He got, okay. my, camera, my camera was like, this is too spicy of a topic. We The light just like straight up fell. It was like, it's the tea, Karen. That's what we're really about. We're, I, 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 do have some re I do have some really delicious tea here. And welcome in, Tapwater. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, welcome in, Sora. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, no, no, no. It's time. It's time for the tea, actually. You are just in time. Um, so, yeah. Moisey, whenever this all went down a year and a half ago, like what happened? Like how oh, I would love Jesus. to hear like from from the the what you feel like is the beginning Ooh. point um, all the way until I guess the end, which would be kind of the formation of Elixir. So what what mm. was it? What happened? Yeah, I mean, I guess if, if I was to boil it down now into like a two sentence thing after it's all done and dusted, effectively what happened is I was looking for a place to call home with this whole streaming journey um and i found the the wonderful community that i joined and it, i joined it very very early on but i didn't start it so i actually found it through like a reddit post that were kind of promoting it at the time 
And I was like, yeah, that sounds like my cup of tea. I was very, very new to online. I've never used Discord before um, until that point. So this was January 2020. I know a bit later, actually. So it would have been March 2020 when COVID really started kicking off. Um, so I'd never used Discord before. I was very new to streaming. Um, my only streaming had been on Mixer so far. So it was very sort of quiet community there and uh, not as many people as Twitch. And so I needed somewhere to, to go and, and sort of meet new streamers, ask for advice genuinely, because this was way, like it seems weird now, there's uh, three years down the line, but at the time I knew nothing about streaming, right? So the, the big thing for me was finding advice about streaming from some fellow streamers. Um, Mixer was a, a weird place. You didn't really get to speak to other streamers. It was an amazing platform. I love the platform, but you didn't really get to speak to other streamers. So I was like, right, where can I find these streamers? Let me go on to Reddit. Uh, and I found a couple of small streamer subreddits, that kind of thing. And I saw a chap in there uh, promoting his sort of small Discord community. They were trying to sort of bounce uh, each raids to each other and, and help each other out. I was like, you know what? That sounds really nice. I'd like to become a part of a team. Uh, and then the rest was history. We kind of grew at a pretty good pace. Um, and I became really good friends with the people in there and, and got to the point where I was literally a co-leader of the community. And that's that's when it got really, really spicy. <laughs> Well, how did you become a mod? Because I joined, I feel like around the time that you had become a mod there or something like that. Um, It felt like at least when I joined, like that, at least I got the vibe that you were one of the newer mods in the community, but you actually really were the one that welcomed me into that community. Um, So I'm, I was, I'm always, always so curious, like, how did you become a mod? Mm, yeah it's, it's weird I, I, at the time I was so proud as well so proud of becoming a mod it felt really weird because realistically none of us had any authority or anything there's no you don't get anything from being a mod right it's just something that you've picked up in your spare time but I was so proud of actually becoming a mod at the time and I, I really enjoyed just kind of pushing an online space and the message and the ethos of it and just finding new people that also needed somebody to chat to whether it was about streaming or just in general during um, sort of the lonely periods of 2020 um so that was that was kind of what started it i i kind of enjoyed being this person that would be a welcoming face uh, uh with advice and and things like that and that naturally lends itself quite nice to a mod role um and then you know after a little while after you've been a mod for a bit and you've solved some uh, bigger issues or been through some sort of trials and tribulations uh, in the community it just naturally fell um that that i would become co-leader which was really exciting at the time well, it's, so, it's like that thing of like you were searching for a community, found a community, and then were able to lead a community. Of course, like that is an attractive thing to want to do because you got to fulfill the space that you were looking for a year and a half previously. Like, that's really cool. Exactly. I was extremely, I, I mean, I'll, I'll be open with it. I was extremely lonely at the time, 100%. Um, I just moved down to London uh, in January 2020, which, although distance wise for, for you guys in the US, that's not very far really for where I moved, but um, no, but we're willing to drive like two hours just to go to lunch. Yeah, so. <laughs> but also, yeah. but also to an extent of that too, it was COVID, and like yeah. certainly, I know England had way stricter COVID mm. regulations and isolation expectations than the United than places in the United States did. So, not only did you move away from a community that you already had, but you literally couldn't see the people outside of this funny little square computer that you're using <laughs> it was huge it was scary um and yeah brand new city uh, to be honest I, so i live in the, the effective middle of nowhere for the uk just fields everywhere farmland um and the job that i work in i needed to go somewhere big like a city so i was like well what better place to go than london i made the leap january 2020 which is before we was all in lockdown actually and then mm -hmm. two months in you know this brand new city barely got my feet on the ground and it was like boom lockdown i was very lucky to keep my job they didn't put me on um so we had a I don't know if it did the same thing in the US, but we had a scheme here that the government introduced where they, uh, it's called furlough, where they put you, uh, yeah, so they give you 80% of your pay, but you effectively didn't have to work, which, um, you know, in the grand scheme of things, sounds all right now. Uh, but at the time, they didn't put me on it. Uh, so I was one of the few people in the business that I was working for that didn't get put on it. So I had to, I was miserable. It was pretty sad. Like in this place, no friends, uh, couldn't see any of my work colleagues. We weren't in the office, couldn't go outside. And um, so it was, it was like, I need something, right? So I started streaming because it was fun anyway. Gaming was my escape. That's what I used to do after work every day anyway. And then I needed to find some friends and, and what better place to do that than Reddit and Discord and, you know, all these community things we love. Oh, Moisty, thinking we get furloughs here in the US. Are you? No. <laughs> no, Although we just starve. I, we, we just 
starve. <laughs> no, uh, during COVID, however, the government did say that like if you we give you money for your business to survive, you're not allowed to lay off anybody. So that was kind yeah. of our version. So we, of, we did of a we did bump. get something like that, and there were like um, UBI style type payments that went out. Not very many, but we did get a little bit of that. Um, yeah. not, not as good as what y'all got with your furlough but package. I also like, that, but no, <laughs> as, as far as the furlough goes, it's like terrifying. Cause if you make a budget on a hundred percent of your salary thinking that, Oh, the only place I'm going to go from here is up because I'll continue to make raises. And then all of a sudden, Hey, surprise, you're not allowed to leave your house. And also here's 80% of your salary. Mm. You're like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> oh so, yeah, yeah. Of course. Especially in places like London, you know? Lot expensive rent people live to pay packet to pay packet so and you're not allowed to like go out and meet people in any sort of way it's it's an incredibly stressful time and i could i cannot even imagine and it's amazing that these communities exist online that people can get into and that like just searching for answers on a little like hobby that you had started led to a whole group of friends in a community you surround yourself with three years later. Exactly. Yeah. And if you were to look at it now, like if you would look at this situation that like all three of us are in, we're in a, in a in a beautiful place now. We've come out the back end of COVID. We're back with our families. We're back with our loved ones. We've kept some amazing friends from, I mean, I can see people chatting away, uh, you know, in chat for the Twitch viewers. They, we've got people like Tap, who I met through Discord, uh, through, through Twitch and streaming, and all these people that have just naturally kind of worked their way into what my normal life is now. And that's crazy to think that three years ago, I didn't know a single one of them. And a, an even crazier story to tell even from that is I met... Um, so Jed, who Karen knows, Landon, you might have heard of his name before. Yes. Yeah, he, still um, comes, so, he comes in the chat here still pretty often. Yeah, yeah. Jed's, Jed's great, friend of the channel. Uh, but I've actually gone even further from just being a Discord friend to one, I got him a job. So we work together and now we actually live together. So he moved that. down to London. That's with awesome. Very cute. Mm -hmm. so. They had a Crazy very fun little Twitter exchange about what welcome mat they should get. It was very funny. <laughs> And we've got that now. We have got the welcome map. Um, did you get Jed's one, the hippity hoppity? We didn't. We uh, we got one that we both settled on. Um, oh. I liked the frog one. I'm not going to lie. The frog one was fine for me. But he wanted a bit of a bit of Twitter uh, engagement, you know, which is a good way of doing it. Cause a bit of fake rivalry, a bit of beef. Of course. I get people invested on the roommate relationship that's happening <laughs> yeah. inside your home. Uh, not only and do if, you and get Jed's, more subscribers. And there. And if Jed's there, you know, he should definitely just do a quick little, like, uh, walk behind you, bunny ears yeah. or something. That would be very funny. <laughs> he's, he's at the shop at the minute, but he, he will oh. be returning it. And he said to me that he might deliver a hot chocolate, which is very cute. Oh, so uh, nice. very cute. Yeah, I get that in. That's good. Um, That's good. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely feel the same way. I mean, Scrub just put in the chat, like, um, basically how we met. It's the same thing for him. Yeah. It's the same thing for, like, um, Lunar, who's in the chat all the time. Uh, Sasha doesn't really come in the chat, but she definitely comes on and does episodes like this, like you're doing right now with us. I met her very similarly. Like, a lot of people now that, you know, I, I talk to regularly and follow, you know, them regularly on their uh, social media or whatever, like it would not have happened if I had not been seeking out Twitch communities like the one that we were in together. Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Tap. I absolutely love it when you make Jeff Bezos spend his money. It's my favorite. <laughs> Thank you, Daddy Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, so it, I do feel like during COVID, like the beginning of COVID between the start and when vaccines came out was kind of like the golden age for that particular community that you were co-leading. It was amazing. And on the surface, what you guys were doing, what you and the main leader and most of the mod team were doing was on paper, like from an outsider, it looked so perfect. It looked like, wow, they really understand how to run a community. This is really great. This is really like um, exactly what you would want out of a community whose goal is simply to help and promote each other, right? So with that being said, my understanding now is that there were things going on behind the scenes that um, were kind of the lead up to the end. And uh, I know we don't want to share any details. So I know a lot of you guys in the chat know exactly what I'm talking about, know exactly who we're talking about. So just to make it clear, please do not share any actual names of these people. Um, you know, they have the right to move on and do better in the whatever they do next. 
So anytime that we mention them, we're going to have code names. Um, and please don't mention the, the name of the community itself either. But I, I would love to know from your perspective what that was like and what was happening with you as the co-leader while the leader was, for lack of a better word, just starting to go in, in the completely wrong direction because that's what ended up happening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you described it quite quite well there. And as you said, I, you know, I became a mod very early on, so I saw the whole thing unfurl. Um, and, and I won't lie to you, I, I, I definitely sort of fell into uh, the web of lies that unfortunately started to happen uh, behind the scenes. And for a while, I, I was, well, pretty much all the way to the end, I was on their side. You know, I, I would back them to the end of the earth. And it, it hurts me now to think that I've had to sacrifice quite a few people uh, to stay to stay friends with this one person. Um, and then realized at the end that that was actually a horrific, terrible decision. Um, and I lost a few people. There was people that I was told to ban and and not talk to ever again. And that sounds crazy to me now. Like I never I never thought I could be manipulated by anybody, really. Um, but I found myself doing that. And uh, yeah, so it was a very, as you said, it, it from the outside, yeah, it looked really good. And I will admit it did work like clockwork. We, we, we did a good job at the part that we were trying to do. But after a while, I think um, I think it was naturally going to head down the route it did. Uh, at one point, we were growing. We was getting like you know 10, 15 people in a day, which is is fantastic, you know. Um, and we, for, to be honest, we didn't really have that many issues like publicly. There wasn't that many people causing a nuisance in in the actual channels and stuff. So the actual community stayed relatively pure. There was a few people that I think you get in all Discord communities that you may have to give a little warning to say, you know, you're not really meant to be saying that here or whatever. Um, but we never really had any huge um, top level issues, but it was all in the back end. And um, and I'm sure as, as management, community managers yourself, like there's always stuff that kind of goes on in the back end. There's always <laughs> little interpersonal relationships that start to get a little bit sharp maybe, uh, and it can get a bit I, spicy. I just had flashbacks to running RPs. Uh, sorry, yeah. I just was like in the <laughs> trenches of being like, we must put on a brave face and can't let anyone know that we're angry. <laughs> <laughs> and something that's happening uh, and we're talking and discussing as a team that I think is part of like being in leadership for lack of a better word like even though that this is a voluntary position being a mod of a community you're still part of a leadership team and it's one of those things where it's like we gotta publicly facing pretend nothing is happening even if there are disagreements and some people are making choices that we don't like, especially if it's a leader and the person who created something, uh, you don't want to necessarily, especially if they're a friend, you don't necessarily want to question their, their choices and their beliefs and ultimately something that they obviously feel ownership over because mm -hmm. they created it. Uh, and coming in, obviously you put blood, sweat and tears into the community, but you came in after it had started. So like, there's this level of like, well, this isn't, is it really mine? Mm -hmm. And obviously it was because you were running it, but you also probably were contending with that a little bit, or I'd assumed that you were contending with that a little bit of being like, 100%. I'm, I'm a co-leader, but I'm, a, I'm still co. <laughs> <laughs> that's it it was always really scary to that that was one of the big things that made it fall apart i think and um i i gave a lot of i was all i've always been a bit more of a person that doesn't really care i've never really wanted numbers i've always told people that i don't if if the opportunity to become a big streamer happened tomorrow i wouldn't take it because personally i don't want to be a big streamer i like having a job <laughs> i like working i like doing what i do streaming is very much just a hobby and to be honest with you i, I was very close to stopping streaming very recently uh due to just sort of the way my life was changing and uh, but i've continued to do it purely because i enjoy the, the the friendly aspect to it so i've never been about the numbers whereas i think unfortunately the other side of it was uh the other, the other leader very much was but very um it was under the wraps so it wasn't about numbers to them overtly but covertly it definitely was uh so there would be conversations about you know well why didn't you raid into me after that and you know, if I start here, can you come oh. to me at the end of it? And it's like a lot of jealousy came out of it. And I was, I, I didn't like that at all, um, but I kind of just shut up and carried on. And a big part of what made uh, our community big was the Minecraft server that we started, which was called Twitchcraft. A uh, good bit of fun. A uh, little plug, it's coming back at some point this year. So uh, keep your I saw there's a little TikTok with some promos. <laughs> 
was it? Yeah, came there's a little bit of TikTok, TikTok there. I saw it. It looks um, really good. good. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a laugh. It's one of my favorite parts of Twitch is is the doing the Minecraft stuff and doing like cinematics in Minecraft because basically a film maker at heart and I can't do it in person, so why not do it in uh, Minecraft? Um, but yeah, we started uh, Twitchcraft and that was me and Kings for UK, who was another mod of the community, very much our baby. Um, and that meant that the leader, the other leader, wasn't involved in it, and that was a huge, huge thing for him. Like he hated that. He was fuming about it, and he hated the friendship that me and Kings formed to the point where I was told to you know, really be careful. I don't think he's in it for this. I don't think he's in it for that. And he was really sort of trying to make me hate Kings. And there's messages somewhere where I've said to Kings, look, mate, I can't be friends with you. Sorry. And it's so ironic because me and Kings now are like, we're at the point now where it's like best man at wedding kind of level. So mm -hmm. that's crazy to me to think that I even would consider that nowadays. Uh, but back then I did. Oh and yeah, all of the people that I was told to be careful about back then um, are no longer, they're, they're all here. And the one that was telling me to do that isn't. So that surely shows that something was <laughs> wrong there. I, it shows... I'm learning so many things. So like, I had no idea that, that there was like, there was like this, it sounds like there was this campaign to try to like, not let Kings have friends. And, um, and, and there was jealousy over raiding into each other. You were told to ban people that really didn't have a reason to be banned. Um, I would love to hear about an example of that if you have one that you can share sure. with like changing the names. But before um, I ask you to share one of those, I just want to make sure that you guys understand out of everyone in that server um, and Kings, Kings has other ambitions too, which I think is also like for me and Moisty, I think part of the reason we get along is because we feel the same way. Like I don't want to, I don't want to uh, not have a nine to five. A nine to five is very stabilizing for me mm -hmm. and very good for my routine. Um, I don't know how much I would have to blow up to quit my nine to five. It would have to be in, an insane amount. But I think even and if you'd I got still, pretty popular, I wouldn't. <laughs> you'd, and you'd probably still have a schedule. Like you'd yeah. still make it nine to five it. just yeah. to be <laughs> different things. I would. I would because I really need that. Um, but like uh, out of everybody in that old server, Kings had the most potential, and I'm not exaggerating, mm -hmm. the most potential to truly just become a popular Twitch streamer. Now, that didn't really happen. That wasn't his trajectory, but he had every building block possible. If he mm -hmm. could have just like made friends with the right other streamer or something like that, he could have blown up and, and Kings would be one of those people that consistently has triple and quadruple digits of people in his stream. I truly, truly believe that. So hearing this, I can't help but think that like, oh my God, Hmm. Dude was jealous of the one person that well, was his true competition. It sounds this much. is a very this is a very common thing that I feel like happens in leadership and especially in creative circles and communities where the thing that starts as a community becomes about the individual for the leader. Like it becomes about the ego stroke. The no, the amount of numbers that the community grows becomes about how well that leader is doing. Like it, it that that the person can't set aside their ego for the greater whole, and everything is is through the lens of this is me, what I want, and everything, and anything that comes in and questions that. So your guys's, you and King's creative endeavor with Minecraft, uh, you know the unsustainable amount of growth of as far as numbers go. It sounds like that the server was growing. All of that suddenly became a personal thing for him or for this person, this co-leader. And it's, I think that it is more common in leadership than people are willing to admit or see. Mm. That the people in charge often are so entrenched in the community that they're leading that they're unable to separate themselves from that community. Uh, and the community is more about them than it is about anything else. 100%. And I think that might have been <clears throat> apparent to some people. I think some people started to sniff it out a little bit. Um, like they're in the old, like the, the closer to the, the end game, end game days. Uh, some people started to sniff it out. And there was there was so much movement in the mod structure, which was hilarious to me because it's like you'd have a mod for four or five months and then demod them for the stupidest reason in the world. And it's like, well, you're going to lose that person, 100%. Like you, you said that it was in a nice normal way and, and forgive me tap for uh, throwing you under the bus but tap was one of these people tap was uh, a mod and a great mod at that and and i was led to believe that unfortunately 
tap was for whatever reason not suitable um and i actually i remember after it all happened and we formed elixir i i did a quite heartfelt apology to tap because tap is such a nice human being and how i'd been led to to believe that there was anything under that outer shell that would be malicious i have no idea but yeah it was just this constant need for him to believe that there was uh something like an uh underlying message from all of these different streamers that they all wanted us for the views and it wasn't about that at all it was about the community we loved being there it could have got me zero views and as long as there's people in the discord still talking to me i don't care it didn't have to translate to twitch for me at all um and what you said about kings is 100 percent true as well he had the the foundations he did the research um, and a lot of that he, he, he would do with me and i got to share that sort of growth pattern with him um, and Twitchcraft was a big part of that. Like, you know, we, we identified that Minecraft was doing really well again and that servers were a big thing at the time. You had things like the Dream SMP and, and mm-hmm, all of these sort mm-hmm. of young Minecraft YouTubers sort of blowing up. And we identified that that was a great place to go to, to find new people. And at the time, like this was during, you know, peak Twitch season of, of COVID. Like we wanted to actually get more viewers then. This was before anything else. Um, and yeah, so we started the Minecraft with that in mind, uh, genuinely thinking, right, well, how can we have fun while also uh, getting a lot of content out of it? Because that's what we need to be streamers. We need a lot of hours of content. And Minecraft server was the way forward for that. And we was willing to, obviously, there's a big cost to uh, Minecraft server. It's not free. And it costs quite a lot of money to run one of those. So there's huge, like, as you said, blood, sweat, tears, financials as well. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, I spent days and days sort of promoting uh, the server and, and stuff on, on Reddit. I became sort of the marketing lead on it all, if you like. Um, and all of that was just feeding into this this other person's addiction to wanting to be the, the man, you know, the guy. I think that you should also, like, be aware of he obviously saw you as a resource that he could not lose because you were that important. Like, whether it be the ideas that you brought or the friendly face that you brought to the community, the willingness to talk to anybody, to help anybody who asked for it, uh, that was something I have a feeling this person felt couldn't be replaced, was irreplaceable. And so, obviously, keeping you was a necessity as far as making sure that this community ran. And... He, that person was going to do anything and everything in order to keep you, including turn you against friends. You're a hundred percent right, Landon. You're a hundred percent right. Cause, and I feel this way. I felt this way at the time and I don't think I was the only one, but I was there because I wanted to follow Moisty. Like literally I wanted to follow mm-hmm. Moisty as a leader. And so if he was going to stay in that old server, I was going to stay. If he was going to leave, I was going to leave. And I was not the only one that felt that way. And I think that this guy could sense that. And and knew it. I mean, there's a reason why the people that he pushed away and said that you can't believe that you can't trust the taps, the kings, all of that was, was people that were getting close to you because he felt insecure about that. I'm going to lose this person that is so integral to my success that I'm going to literally latch on and say anything and everything I can in order to keep this person, because this person is what makes this community alive. It's so obvious now. And when you said that, the taps and the Kings and the the people that were, it was always people that talked to me over him. Right. And it's so obvious now, but like at the time it wasn't, and I defended it as well, which is awful. Like I nearly, I can't believe Kings didn't walk to be honest. Some some of the stuff I said to him, like he was blessing. Like he's so dedicated to remaining my friend. He obviously felt that like it was, yeah, he, he I mean, 100% should have left. No, because you're amazing. <laughs> like, well, and not to like, it wasn't at the time. Yeah. Like, yeah, he obviously cared. Yeah, that's it. So I'm just, I'm very, very grateful he did. And to be honest, yeah. Kings was on the list to come to the US with me. But unfortunately this year, he just couldn't, couldn't quite get the funds together, which is a shame because going to the US with Kings would be so funny. Next uh, year. That means next you guys year, are going to have to do it next, next year. year. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> we go again. But yeah, you, you mentioned to... that the whole Karen, like that is so like, so like humbling and like nice to hear you say that you were there because like it was a like, community is great but you're there for a person you know you come into yeah. a community via a person like everyone comes into a community via somebody else usually yeah. like, that's just the way it falls and mm-hmm. i think the the final night was a big one for me so like skip forward a little bit things go horrifically wrong we can go more into that in a minute yeah. um that gets to a point where 
there's a huge fallout, nuclear level fallout of this community, right? We're talking maybe at its peak, we probably had 70, 75 people that chatted in there active quite often. People. There active people. There was like people. hundreds of people in the server, but the, you're, I think mm-hmm. you're right. There was close to like active. 75 people chatting every single day. That's amazing. It, was big. it yeah. was big. And there's a lot of them were streamers as well. So like it would be constant flows of, you know, who we're going to watch, who we're going to raid into. It was, it was really nice. It was a good experience, uh, but it did get to a boiling pot. Um, and it, I always forget like the main reason that bo- tipped it over the edge because there was so much, I feel like, that got in the way. Um, but I think it was a fallout between um, a couple of the US folks and a couple of the UK folks. Uh, well, I say a couple of the UK folks, one of the UK folks. Um, which, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, there's That's a how I remember there. it too. That's how I remember yeah. it too. Yeah. And I was, um... I was stuck in this awkward place, like in between everybody, you know, because I'd loved everyone. There wasn't a single person in there that I hated. Uh, so I was in this really awkward place. I had one side of the people saying, well, you need to come with us because you can't hate, you can't like that person. And then the other side was going, well, you can't like them people. Um, and yeah, it got to the point where it was just too much for the other leader and they decided to announce that I had basically committed treason and that I was being banished from the realm. And I was sad. I was genuinely sad. I was in a call with Dunny at the time, um, who, again, one of my amazing friends that I've made from Twitch, I was in a call with him and I was in tears. I was crying my eyes out because I, I honestly thought, oh, this is it. This is where I stop because I will lose my friends here. I've got a few friends that will come with me, but I'll lose my friends. And something beautiful happened that I never, ever expected. But the announcement went out and then the gen chat started blowing up. And there's just people going into gen chat like, what are you on about? Like, Moisty is the life and soul of this place. You take him away, I'm going. And it was just so, so nice to see like people. I'm not going to cry because that's not what we do. It's here. okay. This uh, crying is safe okay. on this stream if you it's want fine. to. <laughs> <laughs> It's fine, I'm all good. So we made Elixir um, and we were sat in there uh, in, in the Gen VC there. We had to make, we made Elixir on the spot. So this wasn't planned. We had to make it like on the day because we didn't know it was going to. Because there was combust. too many people to fit into a group chat. There was so many people yeah. that were like, wait, <laughs> where it. are we going to go? And you know, Discord group chats only get 10 people and then it's capped out. So a server uh-huh. had to be made. I had so many DMs coming at me like, oh, you know, I, I wasn't in there today, what happened, that kind of thing. And I just had to, I had a, at one point I had a copy and pasted message of like a huge paragraph, which effectively said, here's what I'm going to say. Like, don't take my answer for the full Here's story. my PR statement. Yeah, <laughs> this is it. Like, if you want to go get theirs, then whatever. So I had it copy and pasted and I was just sat in Elixir and just the welcome bit was just pinging, pinging and pinging and pinging, people joining. And then they instantly come into the VC. And at one point there was like 25 people in this gen VC, just like, all right, Moisty, mate, stop crying. Like, we're all coming with you, fam. And uh, and it was so beautiful. Like, everybody was just leaving and leaving. And I think of the of the people I knew in there, I'd say I've maintained 95% of them all came with. And that, to me, is insane to it's think amazing. that people have the loyalty to somebody that's nice. That's it. I, there was nothing I could give them. I, I couldn't give them any... You had, you had given them like, that's the thing, though, too, about communities is people follow communities of things that have already supported them. You're not going to go join something new if you haven't already been affected by this person. So what could you give them the things that you've already given them, you already built the platform for that. Uh, And like, Again, I had no idea that this was going on. This is all new stuff for me. But it sounds like that this guy all of a sudden realized that you were this necessary part that he could no longer control. And that's why everything blew up is because the game he was playing no longer were working. So here's what I remember. So some of those initial mod demotions and random bannings were handled so covertly that those of us that were just like regulars in the community, we had no clue that they were happening. All right. But then they started happening at a rate that was unmissable and it was like someone was banned and then a couple weeks later another person and a couple weeks later there was a demotion like they were successive and the rate was increasing to where it could no longer be ignored and so people started just talking about it in gen chat like why did why doesn't so and why isn't so and so active anymore or why does leader (laughs) I guess we should make a nickname for him. Um, uh, I like leader. Leader. We can say yeah, leader. Okay. Sure. So so why why does leader, leader why does leader not like whoever anymore? Right. 
and um, and people were talking about it and people were theorizing about it. And then leader notices that these conversations are happening because I can tell you they were not just happening in the gen chat. They were happening in oh, no. DMs. They were too. happening in DMs they were far happening before they were happening in the gen chat. That's how right? things happen. They were happening DMs. everywhere. Your so, chat. chat. Yeah. So <laughs> then, so then leader starts attacking more than one person at the same time. And that's what Moisty is talking about when he says the Americans. Yeah. Because that's what leader would call them. He would say, the Jesus. Americans are against me. And it would be like, wait a second. Okay. So obviously <laughs> the cl this click over here, because it's a it's a huge server. So there's like these little clicks everywhere. Like there are in big service. There was obviously this one little click over here that was mostly Americans that were not huge fans of Leader. Like that was true. And so he basically, like, basically they all either got excommunicated either by him or left on their own because they were frustrated. Okay. So now all of the haters were gone. And this is when it got weird. <laughs> now there was no one else to blame for Leader's failings and frustrations and anxieties anymore. And he started attacking people that made no sense to attack. Like, I don't understand why there could possibly be beef there. It was absolutely mind blowing. I'm and just like remembering Joffrey from Game of yes. Thrones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'm just Joffrey like, does. oh, this is just like, this is like yeah. the Game of Thrones plot. Yeah, That's so what's we, happening. So he, starts, so he starts attacking people that couldn't have possibly had beef with him, made no freaking sense. And so then people started speaking up, people that were close to leader, people that were close friends with leader being like, brah, stop, like publicly telling him, stop. You know, it was it was too big for them to even handle it privately. And then he would just attack them right back in front of everyone. And uh, and that's when we kind of just all started bailing. We were like, brah, you're crazy. Um, this is too far. Can't <laughs> support anymore. Here. Goodbye. Um, you know, and I and I had a lot of belief in this guy. I mean, he was a very young leader, a very um, you know, very inexperienced, but at the beginning his heart was in the right place. And somewhere mm. along the line, he decided that it wasn't about his actual mission statement anymore. It was about his numbers, exactly as Moise well, said. And, and then that's it became all about the numbers. That's yeah. what Lunar asked in the chat earlier of like, how do someone flip like this? The reality is, is it's not a switch that's flipped. It's, it's a, like a gradient. slow progression yeah. of change of all of a sudden you get that address. I mean, it's the same social media thing of like, oh, you get that adrenaline boost that five people join the, cha the channel and then you get 10 and then you get mm -hmm. 15. And it's like that, like you constantly have to beat that high and it is like an addict like leadership is like an addict of like when you aren't meeting that goalpost that has now been set for your serotonin to like get happy then you're going to start spiraling spiraling and that's what obviously happened is that like either the stress became too much of trying to manage something or his his goals that he had set in his mind had become so unreachable that he wasn't getting the boost that leader needed in order to feel satisfied with what was happening. And it became about feeding his own needs rather than the community. And that happens over time. It doesn't mm. happen on a Tuesday. It happens for a year and a half that you're running a server. That's it. It's a slow burner. And um, just going back to the, um, what was I going to say? Yeah. So I, 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 even after all this, I've still got a lot of like, love and respect for for leader like they did a lot yeah. for me which is fine um but they also did a lot of things horrifically wrong and i cannot i can no longer stand by those decisions um and without like going into, i don't want to dig into loads of details and you know we're not gonna it's not here to drag said people or said person but they did a lot right and as karen said there was at the start the heart was in the right place and because of that we stood beside that person mm -hmm. and uh there was a point where they had a particularly rough time themselves and we raised a lot of money between us for that person and that was such a wholesome thing at the time like it was so nice to see us come together and really help somebody in need uh, and we're not just talking like a charity stream we're talking money for that person to to get out of this situation that we're in and it's a lot of money and, it, and I, for, for the so record that was like a legit thing that this person was really going through so i don't want anyone to think that this is like part of their downfall there was no scam here like no. they truly needed help it and we came together and made sure they were able to be safe and have the money they needed to make themselves safe 
it was a safety thing. I genuinely yeah. had concerns for their safety, like their health. Uh, so it had to, like, yeah, a wicked thing for us to be able to come together and to do. Unfortunately, obviously, a few months from our down the line, we realised that, unfortunately, that, that was money that maybe we shouldn't it's, have done that. But Well, no, it's that double-edged sword of, like, yeah. hey, this thing is a great thing that we did to help them. But it also fed that ego of being like, all of these people have gathered around for me, mm. right? Like, it's a good thing that you did. It just unfortunately probably added to the situation of everything that was going on. And it, it's not a reason to not do good things. That is something that you guys should 100% be proud of. But it is one of those, it's one of those things that comes with people leading of like, there's still a human there. Yeah. And at one point, like it sounds so strange to say it now, but do you remember at one point in the US you had the ability to watch a ad to get a few bits? Yes. Is that still a thing? I can't remember if that's no, still a thing. No, they took it away. They, they took, took it, it away. away. I used to use it all the times so that I could give people like one bit or two bits or something. Yeah. Um, sometimes you'd get you a few know. more, wouldn't you? It wasn't. Sometimes um, sometimes you would get like, you know, 30 bits, but usually it was like, watch an ad for 15 bits. And then yeah. I could get, I would have like a little bit so I could like uh, give out like single bits just to say thank you to people, you know? 100%. It's a nice little way of kind of, I don't know, Twitch doing something, giving back a little bit. I uh, yeah. So we didn't get. Why would a UK. Why would a mega corporation want to do that? Come on, exactly. <laughs> Come on now. Yeah, <laughs> we didn't get it in the UK, so I think it was a US thing. Um, but yeah, at was. one point, I was like doing like a campaign to say, look, if you've got this, funnel it into me, and that will go straight to this person. And I was like, literally acting as a middleman to collect these 10, 15, 20 bits here and there, all for all to try and get an extra couple of quid into this pot and. I cannot believe the lengths that we went in the end to try and help, but you know, the dust has settled and, um, and it did help them out of that situation. So at the end of the day, we, we did potentially save, I mean, I won't go as far as say save a life because that sounds like it was literally life or death, but it could have, it could have been yeah. that I'm dangerous. Not sure I, that it, Karen knows I don't the... think it was really life and death, but I do no. think that the, the mental health decline that this person went through while all the drama was happening could have potentially been 10 times worse if they were still in that same awful living situation. So I do think that that money had a direct impact on not making that the whole drama with that server be worse than it had to be. I really truly believe that. So I don't, I mean, I don't have any regrets. I think that we did the right thing. I also yeah. think it's a point of pride to know that you guys were able to form a community that cared this much. Exactly. Like that is something that is amazing, especially in the screen, the, the like context of where the world was at this point. You were still in the midst of COVID. You were still isolated as much as we wanted to pretend we weren't. Uh, there was still an entire world seemed to be going wrong for so many people mm. that you were able to turn to a community and do something to help somebody. And that like that is a special kind of community. Communities like that don't happen every day. No, and considering, you know, 90% of that community had never met any of the other people in the community yeah. in person, which is crazy to think, uh, let alone even spoke to, even on video calls and stuff, like half of us had only ever seen us on, like, Twitch streams. Yeah, it is a purely online community, which is its, its own special recipe of, like, weird, for lack of a better word, of, like... <laughs> I am connected to these people that I have never met and may have never spoken to more than video, like more than like uh, texting and talking on a chat. <laughs> and we've kept the good bits of that, which is like amazing. Uh, uh, there's a wonderful human being called Beans. I think she pops in every now and again, Karen. Obviously, Karen, you know of, of yes, Beans. Yes, I know the Beans. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and and we've kept the kind of good parts of that. And when, when it's possible to help people out, that still happens. Like the so Beans had a... Rough time recently. I won't say why, because it's a personal thing. But she had a rough time, and me and Jeb was like, "We want to do something. Like, what can we do here?" Um, and we uh, luckily, I know her, uh, her flatmate that she lives with, and um, who no longer streams, no longer on Discord community or anything. But I've got them on Twitter, so I popped them a DM and said, "Look, we want to do something for Beans. Uh, don't give us your address, but can you basically, if we were to buy a load of like things, could you put together a little care package?" And it was the most wholesome. I have never been so proud of myself as a human being to see the look on Beans's face. Who I will put it out there. She's such a lovely viewer. Like always subscribing, bless her. Doesn't need to. I tell her every single time, stop it. And just the look to give that back a little bit and just put this little box together. 
there wasn't just like a little box you buy off Amazon. It was like a thought out process. You know, we had a sheet. We 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 thought, why? Well, what what can we get in there? And was very lucky to have her flatmate help us. And she, and her flatmate was like, this is so lovely. She went and drove around the city to all these different shops for us and picked all these different bits up. There was flowers in there. There was chocolate. There was the whole shebang. And then yeah, just put in front of her and said, this is from two random people you've never met on the internet on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, and they've managed to get this together for you. And that. That that's exactly what Twitch is all about to me. That is exactly what community management is all about. It's doing them bits for the people in the community. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, she's such a sweetheart. She so deserves it too. 100%. Yeah. So I want to go back a little bit um, to something that you had said before, how it kind of like started with, or kind of like the the red flags, I guess you could say, started with like, banning people for reasons that seemed questionable to you or mods being demoted for reasons that seemed questionable to you so Mm -hmm. for anybody that's in in these situations that like you start to maybe wonder if your leader is kind of starting to get too focused on the numbers do you have some examples of some of those so that maybe people can think of like what they could look out for because in in hindsight you know Maybe if this, and I don't know if this is the case for this person, but maybe if somebody had noticed early on and been like, hey, leader, I think this is happening and I don't agree with it. Can we talk Mm -hmm. about it? Like maybe the fallout wouldn't have had to be so bad, you know, or Um, it might have helped. It might have helped that person or might help someone with uh, hindsight or or feeling blindsided by Mm something being like, oh, no, this is this is kind of writing on the wall. I kind of saw this coming instead of being like, whoa, where'd that come from? (laughs) Yeah. So what was it like? Do you have some examples of like, oh, ban them for this? And you were like, well, I don't know if that's a good reason or, you know, something like that. Yeah, there's there's three main ones that stand out to me, but there's examples that go. There's like at least 10 examples here where I could pull them out. The three ones that come to me, the first one that hits me is um, is the the lack of interaction in Discord for whatever reason. So like we clearly knew that there's people that are like your schedule's changed, right? If you've got family and kids and stuff like that, which this person did, they had a particularly busy two weeks. Um, they couldn't talk as much uh, on Discord all of a sudden. And that for some reason warranted demodding them which to me blows my mind, right? It's, they don't have to be in there 24 mm-hmm. seven. Um, and nowadays like that, we, you know, we've got Kay for instance, who, who is uh, at the top of the chain in Elixir, like one of the founders and Kay mm-hmm. is extremely busy at the minute. For the last four months, she's been off the radar, pretty much enjoying mm-hmm, her life. Mm-hmm. Yes. We didn't demodder. Why would we demodder? Like that's so, such a stupid way of doing it. So, I mean, that's a big one to me is the, is this sudden like, lack of dedication to it in 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 air quotations like just because they can't put in as much time as somebody else does not mean that they're not doing their part right yeah and, and that was made looked worse because you you know you'd have people like me who could put a lot of time into it so i think what happened is it created this awful kind of they've got to be on our level if you know what i mean and they can't just be good people uh... that can help out every now and again so... or they have to prioritize our things yeah like the exactly. thing that we are prioritizing has to be also a priority a priority for them I see. Okay, One of the worst that makes a lot of though. sense. I mean, I can definitely see demodding somebody in in a community where it's like you know they're they're not, I guess, pulling their weight. But when mm. you're talking about communities that are built for like streamer resources, I struggle to understand what like pulling your weight even means. Like, how could you even have an activity requirement exactly. in a server that's just about networking? You know, because at the end yeah. of the day, that's what these servers are. They're purely just networking servers. So, like, I, I, I'm just kind of like, you know, it's like how how does that? It doesn't compute for me. I I understand it to an extent of being like, if somebody agreed on a job that they would do, whether it be advertisement or welcoming new people or something, that they have a responsibility that they have agreed to, and can no longer do that agreement to the to the extent in which they had originally signed up for. Mm. It makes sense to then reassign that expectation. Yeah. However, yeah, if there isn't if it there isn't an assigned job and someone is just helping with community management is kind of on the outskirts, doesn't really necessarily have anything and is not abusing their power, there isn't any point in right. modding yeah. them. Like it doesn't 
other than sitting there and saying, hey, other than sending the message of I am disappointed in you or I am disappointed in the job, like I as leader am disappointed in the Mm -hmm. job and the commitment that you have for this thing that is incredibly important to me and that it's not as important to you. And you knew for a fact that the messages to these people would always start with, I'm not disappointed in you, but... Oh, yeah. Like but yeah, but obviously, <laughs> obviously yeah. that's what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> but other, what other reason would you have to demod them other than disappointment? That doesn't make... This whatever, that's so silly. If anything, it did more damage than good because that person's confidence is then shook because you've mm-hmm. just gone like, oh, yeah, sorry, you're not the person you were two months ago. Well, Nobody that's... wants to be told that. And and they still are the person. It's just maybe they're a little bit less, you know, able to put as many hours into Discord. And some people were very, very um, honest and receptive and they, they just accepted it, which to me is still crazy. Like I still speak to some of these people that, that <laughs> had to take that bullet at the time. Um, but anyway, to lead into a, a worse one. Is this is probably my least uh, comfortable one. Um, I was I was live on stream when this was happening. So this is the other bit. There was no communication, Ugh. so it would happen of course. Um, without one the other co leader knowing, and sometimes the person themselves not knowing until it's happened as well, which is crazy. Uh, but I was live on stream, and um, so I obviously on Twitch you have mods, the people with the green swords. We love the green sword holders. They're wonderful pieces of uh, the community and the help streamers keep on top of all these silly messages that come in. So I had a mod in my chat. Uh, who was a good friend I'd met on, on Twitch. They were a bigger streamer than pretty much all of us. They had more followers and they'd been doing it for a lot longer. And he'd still make the time and come into my chat and be a mod, which is lovely of him. But I basically got um, a, a foray of, of DMs uh, while I was midstream and even a couple of calls, which is crazy to call a streamer while they're live, right? Um, but <laughs> yeah, some so Discord a... trauma, that's exactly. so weird, but okay. <laughs> so I was there trying to do, do my stream, Careful. keep the energy up. Um, and yeah, I got some messages saying, I've just seen that this person's a mod in your chat. Like, you can't do that because they're doing this all of a sudden. I need you to ban them now. And I was like, well, one, I'm live. Uh, so absolutely not. Two, we can chat afterwards, but you, you're going to need to give me some serious, like, reasons to do this because this is this is a friend I've made. Um, and unfortunately, I, I did actually ban this person, which is terrible. I've not spoken to him since, which is awful. And they got kicked out of the community. Uh, and I'm trying to think of the reasons now, but it was it was effectively because they fell out with somebody else, which is never a reason to ban them from a whole community. Like taking somebody away from all these people because they fell out with one person. No, that's not how it works. Like resolve it between yourselves um, and then maybe just sort of allow them to be, keep their friends in the community, but just not talk to them if you if you hate them that much. So anyway, yeah, demodded in my chat, banned in my chat, banned in Discord, um, and just everyone had to just carry on like it didn't happen, which is crazy. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't, that just, I can't even compute this. <laughs> I think that what's important about this is, it is like highlighting that that power dynamic that exists in leadership still exists in online spaces, even if Mm -hmm. we pretend that it doesn't. If the person who is in charge of something and that you see as having higher amount of power, even if you're a co-leader, again, we talked about like, you're just a co-leader. But clearly clearly you were co, because this person was doing things without running them by you. Very clearly, (laughs) not only like, do you, maybe you had internal feelings about this, but this person obviously saw Mm -hmm. you as co. Uh, that this is my baby and you're helping me with it. Uh, that 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 hierarchy still exists, and that we as people are so conditioned to not question it, um, to like sit there and like accept that the leader says that this person is banned, so they're banned, and it's uh, it's really uncomfortable to push against that. So any like, and I and I'm saying this to you, Moisty, but I'm also saying to anybody who's listening, like, if you find yourself in a situation where this is happening, don't beat yourself up for it because A, it's human psychology and B, that's that's how power works and it's scary. <laughs> it's Terrifying. scary that that exists and to not forget that it exists on the online format as well. Um, that perceived it's even worse social though, rank. They yeah. feel invincible, right? Because they are literally they behind are. a screen, right? So they're, they're, it's, it's glorified keyboard warriorism, really. Like they're yeah. just telling you to do things 
via keyboard and for some reason they've got that manipulation uh, and, and the power to do that. And let's 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 also like cast our mind back as well to how the community was set up at the time, Karen. So if you think back to the I wouldn't say the glory days, but back to the days. But there before was, anybody knew things were crazy. <laughs> yeah, before anybody knew things were crazy. There was a system in there where because it was a streamer haven, right? We could plug our streams. Mm. So that's how it works, mm-hmm. right? We had channels mm-hmm. in there for putting your link and um, channels in there for sort of thanking people for raids afterwards and that all mm-hmm. that sort of wholesome stuff. Um, but there was one big thing that was different uh, that everybody else didn't have, which was an at everyone ping. Uh, mm-hmm. So for for leader, they had that every, for every single stream. Their ping went to every single person in this. I community, remember, I remember. Which is insane to me now. I think about it when it was so. It was so meant. To, it was meant to be a, a like a rounded community experience, right? But somehow, all of this work and effort that we was all putting in as streamers had to kind of always link back to this person which had me questioning whether or not you know whether or not this community was set up in the with the right thing in their mind at the start which yeah. now we know it isn't so that's so interesting that you point that out because at the time i really didn't think that that was anything too weird i just thought like well they set up the community so they get like one little tiny extra bonus does it really matter if they ping everyone i just turned off everyone pings and be quite mm-hmm. honest because mm-hmm. they did that I never told anybody that. This is the first time I've said that. But um, but yeah, I had everyone pings turned off for that particular server just because every single one was always leaders going live. So mm-hmm. I was like, well, I already get, I, I don't need a ping every time, <laughs> you know. No, God forbid. Um, and that was yeah. quite a few times. Like, you know, it was like yeah. four or five times a week. And like, we don't, you know, you don't want that. Um, and because he was very prolific. But then, he was very prolific. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. That also like goes to show that this was, his server everyone yes. here is for him not sure. the community not anything like that this is his own fandom server basically is how he yeah. like that that small little show of it shows that <laughs> yeah and it yeah, really so. was and and it, that's why like whenever the first kind of falling out happened where he kicked out all of the americans um my opinion was kind of like oh okay well it's done now because it's it was obvious to me that this was really leader server, right? And so it's like, okay, well, now the people that didn't like that, they're gone and everything's going to move on. But then, of course, leader kept going. And then it was like, oh, no, leader's brain is really broken, actually, in this way. It's not. <laughs> leader server is falling apart. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so yeah, it was so, it was so crazy um, whenever we were kind of like going through all of this, um, you've just unlocked so many memories for me, Moisty. I'd forgotten so many little details about how that server was run. So Apologies. yeah, I do think that was that was probably a red flag. The fact that the only one that was allowed to have a ping when they went live and they were using an everyone ping was the leader. No one else was mm-hmm. ever afforded that opportunity. No one. Um, yeah, like I'm reading like the things that Scrub and Tap are saying and uh and yeah, like Scrub, I really like what you're saying about like if there's not activity requirements on the mods, just having like a deactive mod role instead, that seems much better and much more mm. fair than just being like, I take your mod powers away. Like, mm. you know, if there's no activity requirements, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. Um, Tap says I did question him quite a bit a few times on it, just kept doing it. I had set up a nice back and forth with officers when it came to like kicking people and resolving issues. Ah, oh, very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, no, we were, yeah, we were just talking about how um, typically human nature is to just like leave. When something like this is happening, mm-hmm. people are going to more likely just silently exit than mm-hmm. necessarily question uh, leadership. And that mm-hmm. is something that exists in the community. Obviously, that's not an individual. Uh, but as a whole, that is typically what happens in communities like this, is that people are just going to be like, okay, well, this is this is, uh, this is is what I'm going to step out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I ain't got time for this. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Well, this is going downhill fast. I will see you later. Um, mm-hmm. Sort of, sort of aspect. And that... That's, again, how people who are not suited to be in power remain in power in communities like this is because it's a lot easier to just take a step back than it is to question. Now, obviously, there is a lot of people in this situation, particularly that were questioning and standing up and 
we're sitting there and being like, hey, why not? Uh, and then we're getting punished and banned for it. And that was part of mm-hmm. it. But Well, I know one thing that um, that I eventually started doing online because when I was faced with these situations, because what Moisey is talking about here with like accusing um, somebody of, of like whatever it is that you're accusing them of and being said, ban them because they did this or did that or whatever. I would be like, oh my gosh, can you tell me more? Can you show me the screenshots? And like, I, that's what I've, what I have started doing. And I do think it has served me very well because you will be able to tell by what they send you mm. if it's like, if there's any validity to it, because either they won't, they'll, they won't send you any screenshots, which is very suspicious, or they'll send you screenshots that are very small. It'll be like just a snippet of what they said yeah. instead of a whole, <laughs> and so, but like, but if it's legit, they will send you their whole ass Everything. screen. <laughs> and it's just like screen, <laughs> screenshot after screenshot with no, no like cutting or cropping. Right. So if you get one of those and it's like, okay, Ooh. there's maybe some legitimacy here and I can actually read these and determine if the accuser is right or not. But if they're sending you anything other than like entire screens without cropping, like there's, you should be suspicious. You should, um, of what the accuser is saying. Yes. hundred percent. And there was, there was, oh, I mean, in the end days, like it, it got toxic and there was forgery and all sorts of stuff coming out. So and I, the way I remember it too, is like a lot of these accusations. Um, cause when I would ask leader, cause when it was, when it was in the middle of falling apart, I opened a DM with leader. I'd be like, what the fuck is happening? Yeah. And I was asking him all these questions and he would be like, well, it happened in a VC. Oh, it ha- oh, we were in VC. That's why I can't show you. We, we were in a VC. Like he said that to like three or four of my questions. I was like, okay. This is very strange. Why are these things always happening in VC? I don't Mm. understand. (laughs) Also, like, the likelihood of things that are happening, happening in voice chat, much lower than people, than they actually are. Because people aren't willing to be honest when speaking. Because, again, it's like that human psychology of if there is a screen and it's text, you can forget that the person behind the screen and the text is a human being. If it's a voice, it's a lot harder to lie and manipulate a voice than it is a text box. 100%. And I'm quite lucky, actually, to be um, to have been like in the position I was uh, alongside it. So of, of seniority, if you like, in air quotations, where like I wouldn't get the brunt of it, right? Because as you said earlier, he was trying to stop me from wanting to go, right? So he wouldn't give me the brunt of it. But I've still got the shit end of the stick. But there was people that got the really like it was really bad um, to the point where there was like uh, like one of the people I know. And I actually, I, I, I chuckled about it when they first told me and then realized, that, holy shit, that's serious. And then it happened to me as well. So one of the people I know had, when it was quite close to the time, um, it, and it sounds like genuine low-level PTSD had nightmares with that person in it. And that's terrifying. Holy so shit, the person that's is, awful. You've never met this person. You've never met this person in real life. You've only seen them online. You speak to them a lot online. Genuinely had them come into your nightmares, which is terrifying to think that a human can get in there. But... And oh there they God. are. And I, I was like, at the time, I was like, yeah, that's wild. And then I had one. I was like, why am I? Like, I shouldn't, surely I don't care. Because it's, yeah, a, it, so. it's a huge part of, it was a huge part of your sense. world. Like, that that's the other thing, too, of like, okay, that is how invested people get into these communities, which is great when it's great. But it also means that, like, when things are falling apart, it's just as legitimate as a friend group falling apart. It just mm-hmm. so happens to be that it's 150 people with 75 <laughs> active people, mm-hmm. a part of it in the group chat, than it necessarily is anybody. And then it necessarily is a group of, like, 10 people. I'd, like, dream of messages. I'd wake yeah. up and, like, oh, my God, was that really? So I'd open my phone and be like, oh, God, did they say that? Did they say that? And then realize it was a nightmare. It's like, well, I should not be having nightmares about Discord DMs because that is... That is a new level of like something's wrong here, right? Um, this is a this is a sign for my subconscious that I should take a step yeah, really back and go and touch some grass if I'm out, out of my apartment. Damn COVID's keeping me inside. I want to touch grass. I want to just go I touch mean, grass. Really, really, yeah. truly, I do think that um the the whole culmination of it had a lot to do with COVID because once we started getting vaccines and people started like going back to something semi-normal, that's Mm. when I feel like the bad stuff started because people got busy with real life and the numbers Mm. couldn't be there anymore. Your time commitment changed. I know a lot of Twitch streamers have like felt 
the like drop off from COVID yeah. when people were just watching a shit ton of Twitch all of the time. Yeah. Channels were growing left, right, and center. And then when the world opened up back again, it, it, it couldn't be as consistent. We didn't have 12 hours a day of sitting in our apartments alone. Like we had to go out and work and do real life things and mm-hmm. see family and friends and all of those kinds of things that you don't have the commitment anymore. And that translates to mods. Yep. But if you've built your entire ego and your entire life around, the, again, the the community that you have built that you then see as your own personal support system and owns personal fan club, and people are suddenly leaving that, and you have no control on getting them back, that's got to be a mo- just like to like put ourselves in leader's shoe for a second. That's got to be a mind fuck. Like no wonder it it crashed and burned the way it did it just sucks that so many people were burned on the way out yeah you said you had maybe a third example of one of these like bannings or demotions that was like really weird if you want to share that so this one this one's quite a lot well it's not light-hearted it's it's equally as bad but um in quite a funny way so we used to have this thing in in Discord, which was quite popular. It's called Friday Night Shenanigans. Which I miss Friday Night Shenanigans yeah, so like much, was, you guys. Really? It was so fun. It was so cute. It was very wholesome, really. It was just like a load of us that were kind of stuck inside on a Friday night, just kind of getting together, having a few drinks, playing some party games, right? And that's just how it, how it went down. Um, and it all started really from just a random stream from Leader with that title. Um, and it just happened to be the stream with the, the title of the stream. And yeah, fair enough. We went in there and we enjoyed our Friday night. We had them on in the background and had a few drinks in the VC, which was lovely. And then, so my uh, flatmate Jed had this amazing idea uh, and he was very musically inclined. So he's in the music industry before COVID and um, he created something called uh, Killer More Kindness, which was like a, a streaming music uh, rap battle show. But it was all about being kind to one another. So we were I making these that. diss tracks, but being kind. And that kind of naturally fell on Friday nights and it went up to midnight because we wanted to get all the Americans involved as well. And we'd play all these tracks and have some drinks and listen to the people going at each other with compliments. And that became Friday night. And for real, before you go farther, I just want to be clear, like this, none of us were really rappers that were doing it, but like some of these people's like kindness Mm. tracks that they wrote were like legitimately really good. So you would have like, you know, um, four to six of them in a, in a show and like there would be like one or two that was like a legitimately like good track and a good mm-hmm. song. So it was very, very fun because you knew that even though we were all amateurs and so most of it was going to be crap, there would be like some like really serious gem where you were like, oh, my God, I didn't know you could write like that. I didn't know you could rap like that. Um, That was really good. So it was always like, very so exciting to go to. Yes. Properly produced as well. Jed pulled mm-hmm. them all together, produced them all to make you sound like uh, really really good in the in the recording so mm-hmm. yeah literally there was no technical drawbacks we had people submit raps on like phone audio and all sorts um and that became and Friday Night make it work. he would make it work yeah, yeah. every time he's a magician awesome. yeah, he's a magician and it, what was beautiful around it as well is that even if it was like a particularly weak showing um thank you for the follow welcome in thank you even if it's a particularly weak showing like jed's track would be full like music radio quality like he could he could mm-hmm. really throw it back so yeah uh anyway that became friday night shenanigans and everybody was excited for this it became a big big thing and jet saw some really good numbers on it it was amazing we got some really big streamers uh, and their communities would come in and watch their raps it was it was generally good sometimes we'd be hitting you know 50 like 40 50 viewers which was like mm-hmm. so good for us yeah um and that became friday night shenanigans so leader wasn't happy with that because you know, it was his idea to have this Friday night thing, right? And realistically, his Friday night thing was just him playing a game and having a drink. Whereas Jed's thing is a whole idea, a whole production quality level uh, series that goes on over multiple weeks with multiple streams involved. Um, and that that really did peeve him. And, and Friday Night Shenanigans became a bit of a sticking point for, uh, for a few things. Anyway, long story short, there was another streamer um, who's wonderful. I've got back in contact, fortunately, now and sort of apologized um, and they are now part of elixir which is great but they they went live one day with just a stream by themselves with the title friday night shenanigans and it wasn't even they didn't even think about it it was just their title and they got hounded because they, they, it was our like branded like friday night shenanigans is the is our community's thing right 
and this this streamer wasn't allowed to do that and they went and they got banned instantaneously from our community for doing it oh and it was God. horrific uh which must have looked so stupid to people that were just sort of from the outside like why have you just banned somebody for the name of their stream that is literally what it is when you boil it down and it wasn't like jed jed was never a mod i may just add that as well uh jed was never a mod in in the community because he was seen as too much of a you know, forced to be reckoned with, and he and he might run off with all the viewers and all that kind of thing. When realistically, <laughs> me and Jed are the most like we could not care less. Like we are so we just want to do funny I'm raps on the imagine, internet. I'm trying to imagine Jed ever like doing some. It just doesn't make. If Jed I got thought... popular, I mean, he was great, but if Jed got popular, it wouldn't be like because he was like watching the numbers and you know doing the mm. what's in the zeitgeist and you know that that's not Jed at all. Yeah. Also, like twitch streaming is not a competitive like it is competitive people are competitive but it's like it's not like a merchandise that are two stores selling the exact same thing <laughs> and they can only buy one like that's not how commodity on twitch streaming works like you can't steal subscribers because nope. people aren't going uh, <laughs> the logic a but it, it's yeah oh goodness yeah, gracious reusing really well. Friday but Night like the was it I ever know about that one? Ever, was it yeah. ever public? Like, was that ever explained publicly that that was why this person got banned? No, only to mod chat. So people, um, other than mods, no one had any idea. They probably didn't I had no even clue. know. No, I had probably no didn't clue know. that this person was even banned. I, I think no you'll idea. you'll know the person. I think, um, and I think I'm fine to say that because they're now a friend of like they're in Elixir. Sorry, it was Skitty. Do you remember Skitty? Yeah. Yeah, what? so Sk Skitty was <laughs> Skitty was banned, and uh, yeah, she's but, back in Elixir now, obviously. So, so here's here's the thing: Friday Night Shenanigans like existed became... far before this. Yeah, yeah well, like, <laughs> like by the first... way, that that title, I'm like Friday Night Shenanigans is like been around forever. Anyway, yeah, for real, like that's just silly. And then, in addition to that, like Friday Night Shenanigans really became Jed's baby. Like, mm -hmm. I'm trying to, uh, like, towards the end of where, you know, things got busy and, and we stopped doing Friday Night Shenanigans, I'm trying to rem to think, like, would anyone have even thought that it was owned by the server overall or owned by Leader? They wouldn't have. They would have thought, Absolutely like, not. that's Jed's thing because he took it to the next level. And then I'm trying to imagine, like, Jed caring that but someone, that's... like, quote unquote, stole his IP. And but I'm like, I can't, the... I just can't imagine it. That's <laughs> the whole point, though. Like, this thing that was supposed to be Friday Night's and in some sort of celebration of leader because leader was a part of it grew and expanded off of leader mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. like it no longer became about him it was became about these raps it became jed's baby instead of leader's idea and that questions the hierarchy 100%. of power <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. if you think thing. of like go on oh no you're good you're good i was just saying like the the things that made us really tight community it was these amazing ideas that came out of the different community members that they would happily attribute to the people within it so people like uh, things like killing my kindness that was big because jed's production work obviously huge but then all of the streamers coming together and not caring about it's it's not on their own channels so it's completely it's not it's not about views it's not about numbers it was um you know there's people that have never even sang in their life coming to do this kind of thing and things like Twitchcraft, which is just a Minecraft server idea. These these sort of IPs in air quotations that we would attribute to the rest of the people in the server. It was never about like giving it to a certain person. It didn't become, you know, Moisty's thing or Jed's thing. It was about having some fun with a load of friends and just taking it to like how far could we take it? Like could we could the as small streamers, could we have these projects and ideas that if it was done by a big streamer? would be completely sound. Like Killer McKindness would be, if you had like a 20K viewer Killer McKindness, it would be incredible. You wouldn't even need to change the production level. Like he literally got a, for the winner, he got a statue made. Like you got a, mm -hmm. a prize. He got, you mm -hmm. got like a proper thing made um, and delivered to them. So it was, it was, yeah, we didn't cut back. We just went for it. Um, and, and I think that's what makes me laugh the most about this is we had all these amazing ideas uh, and they tried to sort of, mingle their way into them in whatever way they could well i think it 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 speaks to approach as well like from all the people that you've talked about the intention was all the people that you've talked about that that were positive attributes to this community the intention of being a part of this community was never to get big 
was never to make a break, was never to grow subscribers. It was actively being a part of the community. And it sounds like even if at the beginning leader had that intention, it changed. Like that stopped being again about the ego versus the community, that that is where the conflict is on everything is that it's all about for him, just how he viewed growth and success versus the purpose that everybody else was involved in. And everybody else was sitting there being like, we just want to hang out on a Friday and do shenanigans and sing songs about kindness about other people. (laughs) That's it. It's, I think it's that's crazy. very true. And Karen. Yeah, we just, I was just going about to interrupt you. We lost you on the mic. I think, yeah. To, oh, oh, you're back. Yeah, we're back. You're good. Okay. Oh, this, the crispness <laughs> is beautiful. It's like, oh, super I was like, secret. wow. Yeah, I, w- I was just keeping super secrets from everybody. They couldn't hear me either. Um, was in hindsight, what I was trying to ask is, in hindsight, was there a moment that you feel like that, that leader flipped too far over to like, caring about the numbers now and you you wish maybe you would have um tried to stop it there was there was there anything like that um i think the most like apparent one to me was when they stopped turning up to my streams and oh. that was like there was a there's a big issue there because like i would be in their streams regardless like all the time every day because that was just me then i had the time to do that and i would and there'd just be times where they just wouldn't appear and i just be sat there thinking where's this this mentality just switched all of a sudden um and what is it that we what what is it i'm doing now that's different to what we was doing so long ago and i I don't think i really changed my mentality it was welcome everybody in give them tips if they need it like i was doing all sorts of stuff man like there was one point where i i'd made um so when we got these new streamers in and they just hit affiliate we used to have this thing that we used to really like having a count of how many people we got to affiliate um and that was a nice wholesome thing it, it started as a wholesome thing but sort of became like a toxic like number that we should be promoting it's like no it's not about that at all just because we help some people to affiliate it doesn't make us anything special we just got the it's numbers to us. help people to do it yeah but anyway these people get to affiliate and there's a part of the kind of congratulations thing i'd always say to them do you want some sub badges like made just to get you going because that's the part of the exciting part of becoming an affiliate right and it was never it wasn't a paid thing like i'll just do it because you're you know part of our community you're really nice in here. You've raided into a few of our members. So 100% I'm going to offer you some, I can't offer you anything amazing. I'm not an artist, but I can get you going at least. And it was a no commitment. Like you can change it a day later if you want to. So I'd, I'd made about, God knows, about 15 streamers uh, sub badges. And that used to really wind up leader as well. The fact that I'd go out my way to do these things for them as if that was a, an issue. Why is that an issue? Just let me do no what idea. I want to do. Because it was no community based. Him. Because it's yeah, community well, based. I mean, yeah. again, it's about building up the community rather than trying to get ahead. Um, and it's that fundamental difference of of seeing, like that you wanted to be a part of something, you didn't want to have something following you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think there there must also be like some kind of weird ownership feelings as well, because like leader used to do these types of things too, not making sub badges, but like he would have like um, awards and things where you could win like little $5 gift cards. Like it wasn't like big, but it was just kind of like his way of saying thank you. So you could randomly get those in drawings for doing various things in the server or on his stream. He had like a whole system for it. It was it was very complicated, very cool. Um, but it sounds to me like anytime anyone tried to do something similar, that was not okay with him. Mm-hmm. Because I think I see your, your sub badges I, to me, I thought like, oh, they this they have different systems for what they do to like give back to individuals, and these are the two different you know ways. And so, to me, looking in, it looked like oh, they're in concert together, you know, just doing slightly different things, but with the same goal. But it sounds like the reality was that's not the case. It was supposed to only ever be leader doing these types of things, or also like. 
I, again, don't know what the system was to get these drawings and stuff like that. But if it was happening on his streams, then that oh, yeah. automatically assumes engagement. Mm. Oh, yeah. And again, it's about engaging with him. Whereas for it you, it, so- it sounds very much like you're like, hey, you reach this goal. I'm going to slide into your DMs or I'm going to slide into the group, ch- the gen chat and just offer this thing. Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do with my channel. It has nothing mm-hmm. to do with you watching me and everything to do with this community. Like you're, you're totally the- right. That ultimate goal versus, hey, here's another way that I can get someone to watch my screen, like an advertisement, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In hindsight, you're totally right. Yeah. And if there's and there's a hundred percent no way to tell that difference as an outsider looking in. Uh and even in that moment. Like there is there is no way. I just think that it's like the hindsight of it all is that community focused versus what the ultimate goal is for the self. And yeah. it's amazing that you have been able to survive this and then carry on a community afterwards that is still community focused. Yeah, definitely. And it's it's hilarious, really. Like we've not had, so we've had Elixir uh, as long as the other community now. And if you compare, if you had a bar chart of bands <laughs> or demods uh, compared to whatever the number is in the previous community to this one, which is zero. There has not been a single ban, a single demod, nothing. Uh, literally, not a single piece of. There's never any reason to, nothing. because this community yeah. functions the same way. Like something that you said um, before is like in the old community, uh, there wasn't really too much modding to do, is the truth. And I agree with that as somebody that was like, you know, active in that community and chatting. Like sometimes I would see pe- somebody share a meme that was like, oh, that's a really not a good meme. You should not have shared that. That is actually, you know, because it's the internet. So I'll just say it, whatever. I'll tell the truth. Like, that's not some Nazi shit right there. <laughs> you know, it would happen every <laughs> once in a while. But it was 99% of the time shared by some stupid teenager that didn't know any better. They didn't mean anything by it. And so it was literally just like, hey, please don't share memes like that. Done. End of story. You know, and I feel like Elixir has been the exact. Oh, my gosh. Thank you so much. Bay less than three. Thank you. Hey, um, I love that thank name. You, thank you. And Sailor Garnet. Awesome. Yeah. So the Sailor uh, Garnet is actually awesome. Um, we'll do a little quick shout out for them. Is she um, out? Garnet. There we go. Um, Sailor Sailor Garnet's around uh, our age, millennial person, and um, and she's uh, like all the time, and they do cosplays, yeah. and they're really cool. Oh, it's over now. You've earned yourself a new follower. Yeah, Garnet's awesome. Um, and, uh, oh, what was I saying? Look, and oh, yeah, the controller and, and... vibrates at, while he snores. It's so It does cute. vibrate while he snores, yes. <laughs> so, um, <gasps> Elixir's the same way. Like, this I don't see... so precious, and he's just watching him, like, all right, little guy. <gasps> Sorry, the, the clip was distracting me. Um, yeah, the, we couldn't Elixir's hear it, way. so we were just watching you freak out. It was great. <laughs> the Elixir's <laughs> the same way. Like, I don't see stuff that's, like, mod-worthy in there. There's, like, every once in a while... Some teenager shares a questionable meme. That's about the extent of anything I ever see in there that's like problematic or needs mod intervention or whatever. Like, and you don't have to ban people for that. You can just be like, hey, brah, don't share memes like that. That's kind of, you know, whatever phobic or whatever the situation is. And nine times out of 10, it's like a 15 year old that is just like, oh, sorry. And then it never happens again. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, so, no, I feel yeah. <laughs> What's really crazy now is that those teenagers from before are no longer teenagers and I still know mm-hmm. them. So I was having this mm-hmm. realization the other day that it feels like the last three years for me, it hasn't been that, uh, it doesn't feel that long. But to these sort of teenagers that I met during Twitchcraft season one, way back in the day when we started it, they're like one of them's turning 18 next week. And I don't know wow. how I feel about it. <laughs> uh, but these, yeah, to these, these guys, these young gentlemen that i met were so so different back when we met them and they required like having to nurture them and um kind of make sure they didn't do anything stupid and now to have them in my dms like moisty i'm 18 next week and like i just want to say thank you for just like getting me through the last few years and it's just the most like it's tear jerking worthy of like, do not attribute that to me, child. <laughs> you are not. A, you are not eighteen. No, I'm not you letting you grow up. You're like their. You're like their. Um, their internet COVID dad. That's Hello, it. Landon's I am become their people. Twitch dad. <laughs> Sorry, Sherlock is just like desperate for my attention right now. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, how usually you your your camera is set up differently because we actually have like the full you know the full camera here for the yes. arrangement for three people, so everyone can actually see. Um, <laughs> Sherlock's little ears pop up. <laughs> he's he's like literally pawing the back of my uh, my arm, like it just comes up, and I'm like, "Child, you're fine. <laughs> it's a Saturday, you know the deal." So cute. <laughs> Thank you, Garnet. I appreciate it. It's really cool. Anyway, sorry, just saw the chat. There was a compliment yeah, no, her, about her my friends. Hair. Her friends, um, doing going through a uh, hair. I can't remember the word. School for it. Anyway, school. And, yeah, yeah, school for it. And uh, and so Landon got experimented on. It looks beautiful. <laughs> everyone um, thinks everyone I've sent photos to thinks it's a Snapchat filter. Uh, I love it. <laughs> I can see that. Yeah, no, that's crazy. Um, so, so sorry, yeah, I really on. do. I really do think that like um that like what you have done moisty with elixir and I know like a lot of the big people don't stream as often but of course mm. they don't because we're we are back to normal life we're not treating the world like we're in a pandemic anymore so of course they don't stream as often but it is still such like a wholesome and welcoming community where I think um, even though not as many networking opportunities are there mm -hmm. just as many opportunities to make friends are there yeah. and to feel like you have a place where you belong that um that has carried over regardless of what happened in the rest of the world and regardless of how much individuals in there are streaming anymore um and i think that's really that a testament changed. to what you've done yeah we knew and that that was going to happen because coming back from covid you know we, twitch was just naturally in a decline yep. um, and a lot of us stopped streaming so we kind of just launched elixir with the with the kind of approach of all right no longer care about the streaming the streaming thing is down very far in there now um you can completely avoid it you can completely minimize the whole streaming part uh, and we actually identified the streaming part as part of the tox like the toxic part in the last thing it, it creates competition it's not about competition it's about cooperative and just friendship effectively so it's no longer a streaming place i don't even call it a streaming place anymore i just say it's a place where a lot of gamers get together to chat and that's pretty much it not even have to be gamers it's more like just a place for nerds right it's just a um a place to come and hide from the outside world for a little bit, whether you come in for a day or if you come in and chat once a month or if you chat every single hour, like whatever, who cares? Like you're just welcome in there, just chat away, do what you want. Don't have to watch any of the streamers. You don't have to stream yourself. And um, it's, yeah, it's quite nice. And obviously we've seen a drop off in, in people, but I think everybody has. Um, yes. So I also think that that speaks to like, not to again, be the human psychology person, but like, hobbies come in phases and a three-year phase is not an unusual thing for people to like really get into and then for a hobby to fade off but what this means is that like the fact that you have a community that a is changing with the people but is also there means that when new people pick up the hobby because there will be a resurgence there will be there are going to be people who continue to join who are going to be looking for the questions very similarly how you were in 2020 you're gonna be there and have the tools accessible for them and be a community that exists so like I think that that's something with long-term communities is recognizing that you're going to have people come and go and waves of people in these like three-year cycles that's gonna be just the natural thing because that's what humans do because we're crazy like that yeah Garnet, I don't the think there's like a early. right time there's not like a right time to start there's not like too no. late you know it's not like I think that. the pandemic I think the pandemic definitely uh, it made it so that everybody turned towards the same thing. It was mm. kind of like the sourdough bread as well. Like yeah, everyone's yeah. like, we're inside so we can <laughs> bake now. Uh, it's it, it's like that same thing, but it doesn't mean that like that was the only time to start. Any time is going to be a good time to start. And it's awesome that there's already communities that are pre-established that yep. you can join and can be a part of. And it's also awesome that your community is changing with the people because you care more about the people than you do necessarily what the community is about. Yes, and I do it, feel uh, like yeah, the community still has a focus. Like it's still focused on gaming. So it's not like it's become mm -hmm. like a general mm -hmm. hangout community because those those have their own whole set of like craziness, right? Like mm -hmm. I do think Discord servers should be focused around something, <laughs> you know? Um, otherwise you, 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 uh, become like a it becomes a place that has a whole other host of issues so you guys still are focused around like you know gaming and things like that but um but you know it's not so much about streaming anymore but it still works in the same way and um and i'd love to know like from your experiences in that original server 
um, what exactly are you doing the same? And then what exactly are you specifically doing differently to make sure that that you don't end up in that situation again? Because even if streaming is not the focus, you still nope. could turn into a numbers situation. Just But I've seen it happen just from literally the number of people bodies in the discord server yeah. can become a oh, focus and then you lead to all these same problems yeah, yeah. No, what are you doing the same and different i mean the big thing that straight away the first thing that we we went on was set leadership um and it's going to be fixed so we came into this one with uh the idea of it being a multi-headed dragon at the top but we're the softest rainbow dragon you'll ever meet because we are just it's, it's the four uh, boys that are sort of the closest to me and then Kay, who came from uh, the previous uh, place as well. And we have been the same five all the way from the start. The, the mission statement was the same. You're going to have these five people at the top. Uh, and if you don't like that, then that's that's it. Uh, but we're the most just laid back people. In the world. I mean, one of the people that are leading this is Wabsu. And if anybody knows who Wabsu is, then Jesus Christ, like he should not be leading anything. Uh, he shouldn't be leading a pistol pub at a brewery, let alone a Discord community of people. Uh, but there he is. And, you know, and he provides the comedic relief. Uh, but then we have uh, the potion mixers as well, right? So the potion mixers are effectively what you'd call the mod team. And that is fixed as well. So if you become a potion mixer, you're a potion mixer, unless you want to step down yourself. Nobody's going to be forced to step down. Nobody's going to be forced to move. Like, there's not going to be a single forced movement at all. Um, and that's what I think has kept it so so calm and wholesome, is that you're very much in control of what you, your own actions in there. Um, and that's what's kept it nice. And the, the, I think the biggest change really was that real big shift away from um, focusing on a reason for the uh, for the server, right? So we all we're all gamers, but there's no specific goal, right? So if you're in there, you're not in there to get extra viewers. You're in there to just chat every day, which is why most of the channels now are just so orientated around normal stuff, um, whether it's you know, gaming or or just this one just called selfies and photos, man, which is just a photo of anything. It could be literally anything. There's a nice one in there. We don't take ourselves too seriously. That's another big thing. There's one in there called Breaking News, which contrary to its name uh, is purely for headlines of things that are just hilarious uh, that we find. And it takes the piss out of the stupid news, typically in the UK. I'm just going to get an example here. I feel like this would be a good segment on your, uh, you kind of do I it. Do with too. The, the we do, segment. we do. I love that channel. The crazy, sometimes there are headlines posted there and, I'm, and I think like, is this the UK's version of The Onion? And then I Google and it's not. It's like a real, like actual thing people read um, in the UK. And I'm like. I wish it wasn't real. <laughs> um, but unfortunately, alas, it is. Uh, I just find to find one that's actually suitable to be read out on stream. Oh, yeah. they're all suitable. <laughs> no. okay. It's a channel for Florida man headlines. Yes. Oh my God. It's, it's like, it is. Florida, Florida man, it is. man headline after Florida uh, man headline. What about this North Wales woman chased by Badger in Shell <laughs> <laughs> I've got one here from the Daily Mail, which is actually one of the bigger papers as well, which is the worrying part. Man is ordered to carry out 75 hours of unpaid work after he deliberately farted at police during a strip search and asked them, how do you like that? Which <laughs> is just... Like, how's that headline worthy? Uh, but it made it. Um, it made Honestly, it. Honestly. Worth it. Worth it. I, so wor worth it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> There's one here. Man says, oh, that hurt after being stabbed in chest. Like, why is that? A news what's, what's going on here? Uh, but yeah, they're good fun. And obviously, we have a proper news channel in there as well, which is obviously suitably uh, tagged with, you know, not safe for work and, and trigger warnings and stuff like that. And that's actually been quite nice that we've made... So there's a big difference as well when you talk about the differences. In the last place, we pretended to avoid those huge things that we all have on our minds. We just pretended they didn't exist. And I think it's actually easier to was, put it Was out there, there like a, a no politics rule in the old server? I feel like there was, but yeah. I don't really remember. Yeah. There was a no politics, no like world news, nothing pretty much. And that's, that's what I like thought. very hard to keep. Like it's very hard to keep away from from big communities of people. So instead of keeping it away, it's we also, just gave it a dedicated place, right? And yeah, um, and it's, it's also quite a nice. very slippery slope because uh, when you have a no politics rule, people can dog whistle still, mm -hmm. uh, and that is also very uh, fascist slippery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I, so. I am pretty, I understand why people have no politics rules and I'm not like ragging on people that, that have them. I get why you do, but I find them overall very hard to enforce once you get mm -hmm. a sizable enough community. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, and uh, and it becomes kind of something that's like, I don't know, there's when you get big enough, there's always going to be people that join that are just going to be like, I just want to poke the rules because I think that's fun. And that's yeah. one of the ones those type of people like to poke. So I just prefer mm-hmm. to not have those rules. <laughs> so having a <laughs> having a place that you sit yeah. there and you go, hey, yes. you're have exactly. a conversation, it needs to happen here. We've got um, huge, so like, instead of telling people don't don't talk about that, you can say, hey, we have a channel for that. It's over yeah. here. Can you post that over here instead? You know? Yeah. And we all know the people that are in there as well, like the, the potion existence that are in there. We know there's boundaries, obviously, but mm. this channel exists to talk about that. And a big one, a, a, you know, a really good example of this is something like the Ukraine war. Uh, mm-hmm. When that kicked off, like this was, you know, that's something huge. Like it affects every single person. You see it in world news. How could we not talk about that? And I think that may have actually been what made us create this channel. And um, is that it's something that we need to talk about and we need to, kind of discuss what we're all seeing because it's very much the social media war this is this is the first time a war of this scale has happened with such social media coverage right so it would be silly to just pretend it's not existing and actually downright a little bit disrespectful to but it's pretend also, it's not existing. it also however uh protects the safe place of like if somebody is being actively affected by it more than others and doesn't want to talk about it Mm. being able to sit there and be like okay i can be in this place that is my safe place that is comfortable with my friends and community and not worry about it being brought up Mm -hmm. uh which is an incredibly important thing as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. a lot of the a lot of our community are european so a lot of them are in areas which are you know very close to some of these countries that are directly affected we've got quite a few romanians um a couple from albania so these things they these do sort of drop into their countries and it is actually if anything quite good to hear the different perspectives from the different people of how it's affected them so that people don't just go on living their life with the you know don't want to drop it on you us folks but you can get your us news tell oh, yeah. you a very specific story right that's how news works so hearing it from people it's actually really refreshing and um yeah so that, that sort of place is really important and we didn't have that before and we do have it now and it's and it's worked I do like that system a lot better than kind of what existed in the other um, server. So I will tell you guys, and you guys know because I've talked about this in lots of other contexts, I think vent channels are the worst thing ever. Do not ever make a vent channel. They are terrible. Um, And that was basically kind of what was in the old server. Like that Mm -hmm. was the place that you were supposed to put like, you know, problematic or sensitive things was in a vent channel and it was a mess. It didn't work. I do think that the the way that we've got like a a news channel in Elixir um, Mm -hmm. works way better to have Mm -hmm. like actual civil conversations about serious things. There's been a couple of times where, you know, we've had... um different opinions on things from people but we're all adults uh, and we all kind of discuss in in the sort of proper ways and if there's no resolution on them then it just ends you know you don't there's, also, there's no fighting it's just chat it also teaches an important lesson of uh if if something's going nowhere stop engaging it's a mm-hmm. lot easier to stop engaging online and in a chat than it is necessarily in a conversation in real yeah. life so if something is happening then you're just sitting there and being like okay this person is being a troll their mind is not changing they're not li- willing to listen to anybody's other perspective that they're just coming out and saying their truth and as terrible or as much as i disagree with it i get to choose whether to engage in it or not mm-hmm. this is a space in which i get to choose whether or not is it actually worth my time and if it's not then so be it I will, I can go and engage in education in different ways then. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Exactly. Which is a all lesson right, that we true. all need to learn about the internet because true. we all suck at that. And by we, true. I mean me. I suck at it. I'm so bad at just being like, actually, I'm not going to get into this Facebook talk. Uh, and yet <laughs> I find myself fighting on Facebook so much. Why does oh, it always add to you on Facebook? Forbid. Why is it always in Facebook comments, Landon? Why is it always? Uh, I'm secretly I'm secretly a middle-aged mom. Uh, and it's the only, it's the only uh, social media I engage in. The boomers oh, on Facebook God. are terrifying, terrifying beasts, aren't they? They could be um, <laughs> next levels of. But I think it's very important to have the the other end of it as well, right? So if we've got this quite serious channel, it's very, very important to have this non-serious channel as well. So we literally have ones in there that's just like, how high can we count? And it's just I love that channel. Okay, I what love that channel. What number are we channel. at now? Actually, has anybody messed it up since? Uh, let's have a look. 
I so haven't as a checked unit, it in a while. We've not Wait, messed it how for high so long. can we count? Where is yeah. that one? So basically, so a- what you're supposed to do is you type like one, but you can't you can't keep counting. Someone else has to come in oh, and type two. So it's I, actually kind of hard because I play this game in real life with my yeah, children. Yeah. Yeah. So um, when it's so bad when people mess it up and when it gets really, really high, like the, the, the troll <laughs> the that lives inside of me really wants to like mess it up on purpose. <laughs> and it's very hard for me to look at it, but it's really fun. <laughs> wow. For 862. And being now, a troll. Which, wow. Yeah. For us, that's pretty good. That's really high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bad. It's just, I've never done it. I've never done it. But like the thought like won't go away like if i'm looking at the channel and it's like a really high number the thought is just like like screaming in my head mess it up karen mess it up type one type one type one <laughs> don't don't let the don't let the uh thoughts win karen i don't i don't i've never done it but like i want to so bad one time one time like k messed it up really bad in like a really funny way i can't remember exactly but i remember laughing so hard and being like thank you because i wanted to mess it up for it was like at 500 something at the time mm-hmm. and like i wanted to mess it up for days <laughs> i don't want to jinx it but i have yet to mess it up and I'm holding, I want to be the person that never messes it up. Uh, no matter the pressure, I've got this. I can do this. I believe in you. Hey, cousin, how's it going? So what else? What else are you doing like the same or different from um, the old server? Definitely. So I, I think a big one for me is is the giving people something to enjoy as a community together. So uh, while we may not have the huge events that we used to do, like Friday Night Shenanigans, it's very important to have something that we can all do together. Um, and with Twitchcraft coming back, that's a big one for us. Um, so getting the sort of the, the younger audience that I used to have who are no longer young and it's terrifying, uh, they're all coming back for that. And that's really wholesome to see them all come back and enjoy something as a community. Um, and we do occasionally have little movie nights and things like that uh, that we can get involved with. We do want to sort of ramp it back up. But as you said, we're all busy, busy bees. But one of the things that's really, really nice as well now is that the voice channel thing, we found a... Uh, plug in like a bot which effectively lets you create a vc by clicking a button right and you get to name it and you can do what you want you can lock it if you want to lock it and that's just like a nice way of doing the vcs i find like it's just a uh, there's no longer that kind of fear of having to jump into general chat if there's like a load of people in there that you you know you've not spoken to before um you can just create your own channel name it what you like um nobody's gonna sort of hound you to say you need to name it this you need to do it at certain times it's just a uh, create what you want if you're playing a certain game then name it that and you can maybe find a couple of people to jump in with you to play which is really nice yeah, i find um I, I i really like that because i always find vcs kind of challenging for um multiple reasons a couple you just hit on like um you know how do you know if it's okay to just jump in if people are already in there it's very hard to tell if it's like okay or not okay um, on Discord. And then the other thing, and the reason why I don't use them a lot on my servers, I use them very sparingly, is because I got burned very early on um, in a totally different server, not RP related or anything, where somebody was like, so and so did or said this in the VC. And I was like, well, I can't prove shit. So there's really nothing I can do about that. I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. So <laughs> there is like this level of needing to have, feeling like you are responsible for like yeah. what's happening in the place that you're hosting, which means yeah. that if there's a VC that's happening, you should have a mod in there or, or some way to then like fact check things. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately there isn't that. And, no, and if there was that, nobody has time for that. <laughs> yeah. So I think you have to be very careful about making sure that you've built a really good community, mm. um, which I think uh, Elixir has. And I and I assume y'all have never had any like so and so said this in the VC type of complaints. So no, you don't have to worry about not. that. Not yet. Yeah. So <laughs> knock on wood. But I think it's because because you guys have um, taken such care to make sure that people uh, feel like comfortable in your community without like making it into like this very restrictive kind of internet style safe space where you you got to walk on eggshells all the time right like you guys have a really really good balance there um where it's like not a internet safe space but like an actual you know place where most people will feel pretty safe actually a nice place to be yeah that's just reminded me actually (laughs) i've completely forgot about these things we did but we did a um so with the new threads feature and the new hub feature that uh, oh, Discord yeah. brought out, which are great, I like these kind of features, uh, we did this thing, we did one in October, and we also did one last July, 
uh, and it was called the the one in July was called something the some, July Jamboree or something like that, which was effectively a little thing I'd set up like a little thread where I told people to post one picture a day. So for, like basically, you know, on the iPhones and stuff, you have them sort of five random photos from your camera roll that are shown to you every day, like memories. Um, I basically told people to go into their phone, find one of these memories that they're happy to share and just put it in there with a little explanation of what it is. And then we can learn a little bit about ourselves, like stuff that's outside of the online community. And I didn't know if it would work at, at, at first, but about halfway through, I was like learning so much more about the people that are in the community, what makes them tick, that kind of thing, like outside of the gaming world. And I think, Karen, you actually got involved. I think you shared a picture of when you... If I cast my mind back, it was the time you went. Um, he was on like that bike thing in the sky on like a rail, like yeah, monorail bike thing. Yeah, uh, and it yeah. was just so nice to see like the Karen like outside of Twitch, just like just learn a bit about you, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's really I loved that- July Jamboree. I thought it was so fun. Like I wish I could have um, been participating the entire month, but of course I participated here and there when I could and read as much mm-hmm. as I could there um and uh i loved every second of it. i thought that was like such a cute little event it was very i cute. just i have to just give you props on how amazing you run a community like having wanting that to like sit there and be like i want the people here to be real is I, i'm like sitting here being like man that's a classroom tactic for me <laughs> like as a teacher i'm like hell yeah that's that's it right there like you're it is so clear that this that this community is successful because of the people who have the power want it to be a community, a genuine community, and that you do the things like, hey, we, oh, hi, lady, we exist outside of the realm of the interspace, and how can we connect in that way? 100%. I think that's awesome. Yeah, and it's I, I remember tweeting about it like halfway through because it got to me. Uh, I may have had a beer or two, but it got to me about like some of the stuff I was learning was like, this is the kind of stuff that you have to invest hours into people in real life to learn. And yet these people feel comfortable enough to just let these people on the internet know it. And that's just so such a beautiful thing. Um, and I want to do more of it. I might bring it back this year because it was like genuinely quite a wholesome thing. You should do thing. it. It was so you should. Yeah, and, it's good. And I think... I think that like obviously that that shows the safety but that's also something that's so unique about the internet is that because this is a space that for whatever reason we sit there and be like we could say whatever we want and not feel the pressures of of society on us so I am going to be more vulnerable in a space where I can hide behind text and because of that it opens up different forms of relationships and capitalizing on that and being able to create something because of that is really is is all about the potential of what these spaces that exist on the internet are supposed to be about. 100%. 100%. And I think one thing that really stands out to me about uh, this as well is that the people that speak every day, I'm getting an insight into what their every day is like. And we all know that sometimes you have good days, bad days, right? That's how life works. But yeah. on other social medias and stuff like that, you're just seeing a highlight reel of people. Uh, like Instagram, you're just seeing the best bits. Discord yeah. is a place where I've genuinely speaking to these people and learning that sometimes they're having bad days and I'm there to help them on their bad days. But, you know, if I have a bad day, then I, I feel like they'd repay that. Um, and I think it's beautiful as well, the fact that Be Real, the actual app, is blowing up now. I use it quite a lot now, which is nice. So once a day you go on there and you literally put a photo about what you're doing on the spot, no filters. And I'm like, realistically, that's what Discord's like all the time, which is beautiful. Like I get to see there's some people that are doing like crazy stuff, right? So if somebody's on holiday, they'll be getting updates about their holidays. Uh, somebody's got a new cat. I get some updates about their new their new cat, which is adorable. Somebody's going to the, the cinema. They've watched a new movie. Uh, that gives a review about that like it's such a wholesome and really raw and grounded experience having a community of people that are genuinely interested in telling you about the little bits of their day instead of the highlight reel and we have a dancing cat on screen guys can it's we get so a little, distracting can we get i'm just like wow come on wow here we have moisty being so genuine <laughs> and so like open and honest and lady is just coming and in here just... and showing her moves <laughs> i was trying to get her uh to use some energy because she keeps showing her butthole and then if she's not doing that she wants to rub her face on the microphone which is also not good so it's like time to dance <laughs> this is a 
chance now. Um, and I think the like what you were saying as far as like Discord is not a social media. So that idea of who we are branded and our online selves doesn't exist. Because you can just be this third thing. Like we have, so you have your person that persona that you express to the world that you are in real life. And then you have that online persona that you are. And Discord gets to hit that same place that like group chats and texting and all mm-hmm. of that gets to hit. And your real friends get to hit. Where it's like, I am this third thing. And that is closer to the person I am inside of my head and not having to put on a mask for anyone else and it it is so vulnerable and so cool because you do get to know people that way even you just have to put intention into it and it's so so nice isn't it it's really nice we just didn't have that before so right so we are nearing towards the end of our time with Moisty. So I would like to ask you um, Moisty as kind of a, a final question Um, Everything that you've learned from running Discord communities over the last few years, um, what is kind of like the one thing that's like, if I only have five minutes with somebody and they want to set up a community, they need to know this thing. Like, what is Mm -hmm. that one thing you would like to share? So I think uh, there's a mantra that I've got at the moment that's actually, this is quite beautiful how it's come together. There's a mantra I've got going in my life at the moment um, that doesn't need five minutes it needs about five seconds to tell you it's one sentence and it can be applied to discord 100 percent. so it's if you don't know don't worry and that's what i tell anybody so if it's something that in your head you're already worrying about it even though you don't know the extent of it whether it's going to happen whether it's going to exist whether it's going to be good or bad don't worry about it and it sounds so simple but when you start doing it you, you will be forever thankful for it right so if you're stressing for instance i saw somebody in chat forgive me i can't remember who it was but they said that they're scared about starting a discord you don't know it could be the best thing in your life right it could oh, that's bell be bell listen he's talking thing. to you now <laughs> here you go straight to you straight to camera you, it could be the best thing that's ever happened to you in your life so if you if you don't know don't worry just go for it um give it a go uh if you're worrying about um maybe creating a certain channel or streaming a certain game or whatever just just go for it and stop worrying about the things that haven't happened yet and if it does get to the point where you need to worry about it and it does actually happen then fair enough that was probably going to happen anyway but at least you're worrying about it when it's actually worth worrying about instead of worrying about it early and stopping yourself don't let it be a blocker and break down those barriers and just give it a go it's it's very in line to like one of my favorite quotes which is like you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take (laughs) where it's like yeah don't if you don't know, don't worry. I love that. Oh, I love it. I love it. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do think that there's a lot of negative experiences on on Discord, but I think that's why um, that was kind of what inspired like us wanting to talk with Moisty is because he went from having such a terrible experience to spinning off into a server that's now gone for a year and a half with like basically no problems. I mean, like little things, like tiny little things, but nothing crazy. Like it is, what you know, very normal. Like, I don't know if I think about like all the the servers that I'm in and like various dramas and things that happen and stuff like that. Um, it's one of the more active ones and also one of the least amount of drama ones, which I think is, uh, it's, it's saying something. And the only way that you get there is by practicing, right? You, yeah. You learned, you learned a lesson. <laughs> like yeah yeah at the end of the day right like that's you, what it is it's like and whatever that lesson was it it is whatever you took away from it but you were able to take something and apply it better for the next time mm-hmm. and that's mm-hmm. what trying gives you mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's a testament yep. to the people in there isn't it um and, oh I my mean, god it's jed. jed it's jed, jed Moisty said you were at, at the jed. store um <laughs> I'm going to leak my nudes and destroy the server. Jed, I think that would actually bring <laughs> Honestly? more people to the Jed, server. Come in here. Come um, promises. Jed, Jed promises. Nudes, let's have them. <laughs> Don't tempt me with a good time. <laughs> Don't Your marketing campaign. <laughs> yeah, that July Jamboree so... is going to be setting off with a real strong start. Start in right? July. Yes. 
Yes. Love Chicken it. Chicken wings. Oh my God. That sounds oh, so good. Okay. Well, guys, um, before we kind of do a little bit there he more. Oh, there he is. Oh, did I hear him? He is. Jed. Here he is. Uh, wait, where's my camera? There he is. Oh my God. Hey, Jed. Hello. Oh, yes. There you go. That is Jed, my, my wonderful. Well, it's gone from from starting just meeting each other online to being flatmate and work colleagues. So that just shows you the power of Discord, right? Right. And I know yes. that um that Jed is not really like actively streaming and things like that right now. However, I have hope that someday. So you should all go follow him for when that day comes. <laughs> I'll be. I can tell you right now, there is there's something in the works. Let Ooh. me just say that. Oh, I'm excited! I'm excited. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, so before we kind of, um, this will kind of be the last part of the YouTube video version. So Moisty, um, what would you like to plug? Should everybody follow you? Should they go to your, your Twitter? Like what should we promote? Sure. I mean, you're more than welcome to go along to my socials. I'm just uh, a Moist Goat on Twitter and no, sorry, not on Twitter, on Twitch uh, or on Twitter. I am at fringe, but the I and the E are a one and a three. Uh, but realistically, None of that matters to me. Couldn't care less. Just if you're going to do something, pay it forward to somebody today. Do something nice. Um, I've got something coming up soon, which is very, very close to my heart that I've not told many people about, but it's all about getting flowers in front of uh, the men in your life. So we don't get flowers with men. That doesn't happen very often. Um, the, sometimes there's men that only ever get flowers at their funeral, and that's terrifying. So uh, let's try and break that a little bit. Let's make sure that the first flowers that men receive aren't the ones on top of their coffin um and yeah get some flowers in front of a guy that means something to you um so there's no stigma just do it do it i love all that all right so for those of y'all watching the vod on youtube thank you so much for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe if you really enjoyed this you should also come and follow my twitch so thank oh. you all so much and um and also and uh, don't forget of course as always to make it a great day and don't